We need to think about dedication. We need to think about commitment. And to do that which is right. That should be first and foremost on our minds. Every one of us, every day, make decisions. Some are good, some are not so good, perhaps. But we make those decisions in our daily activities. And that is good that we do that. We have to do that. But there's some things we need to consider when we make decisions, choices. Thank God that we have that freedom, that He didn't create us as a robot. But He gave us a free will mind to either do right or do wrong. And so those things are a blessing within themselves. But I believe, at least for me, there are some things that I can think about and consider as I make my choices. And I truly believe that I, and every choice I make, is going to make a difference in my life and or others. Without a doubt, it's going to make a difference. And those differences will be for good or for bad, for better or for worse. And so I have some questions I want to give to you this morning. These questions I answer myself, so I ask that you honestly answer them to yourself as well. It will be for your benefit as well as it will be for mine. First of all, does the choice that I make put God first in my life? Now think about that. Do the choice or choices that I make put God first in my life? That's a question that will haunt us if we get serious. In Matthew 6, Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of these things will be given unto you. We are a world, a society, at least in America, that all we think about, and I say all, but one of the biggest things on our mind is our food, our clothing, our shelter, or our well-being. But Jesus said, if you put the church first, if you'll put God first, all these things will come. They'll happen. But we work so hard at getting worldly goods. But we need to ask that question. We really do. Because the next question would be, if, in answering that first question, would it be to sowing, and when I say sowing, I mean what the Bible talks about, sowing to the flesh, or would it be to sowing to the Spirit? A good verse for that is found in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7, and then also verse 8. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Now that right there stops me. Do not be deceived. Don't deceive yourself in, in any way. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, and it's very clear, that shall he also reap. The next verse reads, For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Pretty powerful. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So there's a choice in how I sow and what I sow. Because whatever it is that I sow, I'm going to reap it. Believe me, I'm going to reap it. You will reap what you sow. We're all going to reap what we sow. And so when we think about these things, and I pray that we do because they're very, they're very important, and actually they will determine where we're going to spend eternity. We know this. We need to think about our dedication and our commitment to that which is right. That's so important. Would it increase 
or will it decrease my spirituality? When I consider this, we just read from 2 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 10, and I won't reread those. We call them the Christian graces. You add this, you add this, you add this, you add this, and you go on. And so these are things we need to consider. That's why Peter, in that 10th verse, he said, and it's very clear for us, wherefore the rather, listen to him. Brethren, give diligence to work out your own salvation. That's something we have to do. We have to make sure that our calling and our election is sure. That is a positive thing. And so we do this. And he says, if you do this, you're not going to fall. Because you're making choices that's going to keep you on the straight and the narrow path. That is very important. The choices that I make, are my choices considerate to others or would I insult others by the way I conduct myself or even the way I treat them or the way I approach them or any other way? You see, all of us are going to stand before the great I Am. Believe me, we're all going to stand. And as I said in Bible class this morning, we're going to stand alone. You're not going to have the Holy Spirit there to groan for you. He'll be there. The Godhead will be there. You're not going to have Jesus to plead for you. He's going to be your judge, not your Savior. And so we're going to stand alone and we're all going to give an account for our lives. It's very important that we not get so mixed up in other things, especially ourselves. But am I really considerate of others? Am I really concerned about their welfare? Do I really care about their feelings? Some do not. You're not going to answer to anybody but God for this. You will and I will give an answer for the way I treat other people. The way I consider them and so on and so forth. Would it violate the rights of others? You think about that for a moment. There's a lot that could be said about this, but I don't even have a fraction of the time to deal with that. Would I want others to engage in the conduct under consideration? We know Matthew 7, 12. Jesus simply tells us to do unto others as we'd have them do unto In other words, you treat people the way you want to be treated. Fair, honestly, with dignity, with love and compassion. And I guarantee, as we said in Bible class this morning, if we offend in one area, brethren, we don't look at the Bible the way we should anymore. We don't even look at our obligations as Christians as we should anymore. But I will guarantee you, we need to understand that this is very serious. Do I even consider the other person's feelings? Do I even consider about their welfare? Do I even care? And yet we're the family of God. The family of God, a family that should love and care for one another. We would do without to make sure that brother or sister is okay. These are things we need to really ask ourselves. Am I really serious about living the Christian life? Am I really serious about dedicating myself to the cause of Christ? We need to think about this because it's very important. I love studying the Old Testament. But I love studying the New Testament more. But I remember in the book of Deuteronomy, God was having so much trouble with His children. They were rebelling against him. But he would have his prophet to speak as he, he says, what you need to do is look down at the end of this trail where it's leading you. Do we realize the trail we're on, where, where, is it, where is it leading us? These are things to consider. God says it's smart 
to look at the end of the road. At the end of the road. Look at Deuteronomy. Look at chapter 32. Of course, you don't have time to open it up. But I want us to look at verse 29. Oh, that they were wise, God says. Oh, that they were wise. What do you mean, God? That they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Those are amazing words to me. Hmm. And so am I considering my latter end? We may be closer to it than we realize. I don't have a clue when I'm going to die. But the Bible tells me that I must, in order to see heaven, die the death of a righteous man. No, not perfect in any way, but I have the blood of Jesus that I can be forgiven. And so these words are very important. And the bottom line is, as John said in John, 1 John 3, God knows our hearts. He knows everything there is about us. And that's important. The reason it's important, since God knows all, I know one thing. Man may not treat me right. My brethren may not even treat me right. Though, though that's just the way life is. But I know who on who is. That's God. God will deal with me fairly. God will deal with me justly. He will deal with you fairly. He will deal with you justly. And when I stand before Him, I'm going to give an account for my life. I'm going to answer for those things that I did, that they be wrong, that they're things that I did right. I'm going to give an account of my life. It's not going to take long. I don't believe it'll take long at all for God to judge me through His Son, Jesus. And so it's very important that we consider these things. We truly need to consider the end of our road. We really do. There's nothing on this earth worth losing your soul over, your salvation. Nothing. And it's important we know that. And so, I need to ask this question. What I do with my life, now consider this. Does it in any way have the appearance of evil? I'm told by Scripture, do good unto all men, especially those in the household of faith, Galatians 6.10. I am to do that. That's commanded. That's what God requires of Jimmy Young. He's not asking. He's not suggesting. That is a commandment. I am to love God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. But just to say that I love Him with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength doesn't mean I do love Him. I prove it by my life. I prove it by the way I treat people. The way I respond when someone does me wrong or the way you respond when someone does you wrong. You see the maturity of Christianity in all of this. But we're so friendly with the world, it's unbelievable. And yet the Bible says to abstain from all appearance of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22. Brock has said it several times, and he's right. It seems that we just want to teeter on the clothes, just to get as close to that edge as we can get and try not to fall off. When you do that, you're lost. Because let me tell you why. You're already compromising with truth. You're already compromising with your own salvation. I wish, and I pray for the time, when we take living the Christian life as it should be. I'm talking about the church as a whole. Until they see us the way we're supposed to be and must be, we're not going to feel many pews anymore. They have to see Christ living in us. There's no, nothing worse than someone who pretends. Children pretend when they're playing, but they're innocent. We cannot pretend that we're Christians and not live the Christian life. That's hypocrisy. 
And so I think to myself, what would Jesus do? What would He really do? Well, we know what He would do. He would definitely do His Father's will. He always did. He never wavered from it. He never mistreated anybody. He never took advantage of anyone. He never lied to anyone. He never abused anyone. He never did anything contrary to the will of His Father. So important. I know what Jesus would do. But I can tell you also that Jesus left me and you an example to follow. He definitely did that. In 1 Peter 2, 21, where even here and too were you called. Now listen to this. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow His steps. Now I want you to consider this as we get ready to end this lesson. I want you to only look at yourself as I only look at myself. As you deal with people, human beings, whether it be your wife, your husband, your children, grand, it doesn't matter who it is. Do you walk in the steps of Jesus when you do it? Do you really? These are serious times, brethren. We need to act seriously as Christians. And let me tell you something. Believe it or not, you may think, I, but I am so grateful that I'm a Christian. My, oh my, am I grateful to God. I don't know what I would do if it wasn't for God. The last three nights, I don't know about you, but as I was lying in bed praying, I went to sleep all three nights praying to God. Praying for my wife. Praying for the church here at Nettleton. Praying for the church all over the world. Praying for, for workers. Praying for just so much. But in that prayer also gave much thanksgiving to God. Oh, you're bragging. I'm just telling you, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you how grateful I am to be a Christian. No matter what you do to me, no matter what anybody does to anybody, God's there. He observes every action that I make, everything that I think, and everything that I say. Whether it's to your face, whether it be to your back, doesn't matter. He sees it all. And He'll take care of that. And I've come to that conclusion, all is well. All is well. And the reason being is, God is in control. If we choose not to look at our lives, if we choose not to treat everyone the way we want to be treated, if we choose not to love each other, if we choose not to love the lost, then that's on you. God will deal with you justly, just like He will me. I must... We must let our lights so shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. You see, Peter was right. We are to follow his steps. Why? Because guess what you do when you follow the steps of Jesus? He leads you all the way to heaven. Boy, it's a beautiful thought. It's a gorgeous thought. And I may make my final step today. And that final step will either lead me to heaven or it will lead me to hell. It doesn't matter how much I get in a pulpit and teach. It doesn't matter how I teach in a Bible class. If I ever, never, ever preach again, never, ever teach another class, it is my life that I'm going to answer for. Yes, for the things I say, and yes, for the things I do. And so I need to consider all of these things. I need to, and as I contemplate this, this tells me, Jimmy, you need to really and truly, you need to be a dedicated and committed person to that which is right. That's where it's at. And so, let me ask this question as I end this. 
what I want to be doing, i.e., that is living, acting, and reacting the way I am right now when God ends this world? Would I? Will God see me and find me as a peacemaker? Will He find me temperate? He already sees me. But on that end, will He, when at the end of that road, as God said to the children, you need to contemplate, you need to think about the latter end. Will He find me the way that He requires me to be? Only I can do that. Only I can do those things that would, for Him and His Son to be able to say, well done. But until, brethren, we take our Christianity dead serious, this sermon or any other sermon like it will mean nothing. As a matter of fact, it will offend rather than do good. But it is God's Word. We need to do a lot of soul searching. And I mean a lot of it. We need to be a more grateful people, more humble, more kind, more gentle, more meek, more honest, more sincere, more dedicated, more committed. We need to put ourselves behind and others before us, but always put God first. That's a true Christian. It's not a game we're playing. We're treating the church like it's ours. This is not our church. It's the church of Christ. It belongs to Him. He died for me. He died for you. Regardless of what you might think or feel, it's the truth. And yes, each and every one of us need to ask these questions to ourselves and answer them honestly. God already knows the answer. He already knows where we're at. He already knows where we're going. But I have a choice in what I do or don't do. What I want to be doing, what I'm doing now when Jesus comes. When I when I someday stand face to face with Jesus, and I will, at that judgment day, will I be sorry or even ashamed of the decisions or actions I took? I'm a Christian, and I should be acting that way. I should be thinking of others more than I think of myself. I should be building up the church and not tearing it down. Yet I have to be honest and I have to be a spokesman as you are. You may not do it in a pulpit, but you do it everywhere you go. Your life says more than what you say yourself as well as mine. And so... Or the decisions that we're making, the things that we're doing and saying, will it be okay in the end? I want to end this with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. That I miss no words at all, I want you to listen as I read this verse. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. What does that mean to you? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You may already have me turned off. I don't know. But those of you that will listen, did you hear him, what he said? Jimmy Young didn't say that. I'm just saying what Paul said. We're going to all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now listen to what he says. That everyone, every single one, may receive the things done in this body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Now that's a truckload. That's truly something to think about. We should be growing by leaps and bounds in the church of Christ today. 
and yet we're the least growing religion on this earth. And that's sad. Christ who died for us. We belong to Him. We're His bride. Well, I don't like what He says. I don't like the way He... I don't know. I don't know. Just a go. We're not going to heaven, brethren. We're not going with that spirit. We must have the mind of Christ to make it to heaven. It's very serious. I don't see a whole lot just like you, but I see a whole lot. I hear a whole lot. Some is true, some isn't. But it scares me. And it hurts. This is the Lord's church. What on earth are we going to do with it? It doesn't start with just HR or Jim. It doesn't. It starts with me as an individual and you as an individual. I thank God I'm not going to give an account for you. And I'm sure you're thankful you're not going to have to give an account for me. But I will give an account for myself. What will your answers be to all of this? Will there ever be a time that we'll really get serious with our Christianity? Oh, he's accusing me of not. Don't, don't even go there with that. Will we ever get serious with our Christianity? Of who we are and what we are and what is placed before us. Not easy, but it can be done. Because we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. If you're not a Christian this morning, you can be one. If you're willing to obey the gospel, understand what Jesus said in John 5, 24. We are to hear His words. Understand what Jesus says. And a lot of men do not get this right when they're extending the invitation. John 8, 24, Jesus said, you must believe. And many say, believe this. Yes, you have to believe this. But Jesus says, you must believe that I am He. And so many are just saying, believing is believing. that No, Jesus says, you must believe that I am He. Except that you believe that I am He, you'll die in your sins. So what does he say? You must believe that Jesus is who he says he is. You must do exactly what Jesus said in Luke 13, 3. You must repent or perish. Pretty simple, isn't it? You must do what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 32. In reality, that whole context there is living the life of Christ. You're confessing Christ with your life. But he says, if you'll confess me like the eunuch did now, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father which is in heaven. But the haunting verse is the next one. If you deny me before men, and that is also denying him by life, the way you live. He says, I'll deny you before my Father which is in heaven. And by the way, that denial will come, guess when? On the day of judgment. Because Jesus will say, I don't know you. This is not a game. This is serious. Then you must do what Jesus said in Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and the baptized will be saved. He that believeth not will be condemned. And the glorious thought of knowing in Acts 2, 47, when he said the Lord will add to the church. He'll add you to the church. What a beautiful thought. My, oh my. For those that are Christians, those of us that are members of the body of Christ, each and every one of us are to be presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. We're to love each other. We're to build the church up. We're to be peacemakers. We're to do everything that we can to make sure that we're being a part of helping the church. Sometimes that takes rebuke, but that's love. But we are to care for one another. And we are to love one another. We are to have, take our responsibilities for real and go out into a world that's lost and dying in sin. Man, we got to do that. 
We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. That's not, would you please? That is a commandment. We must be wearing ourselves out for the cause of Christ. And if we're Christ-like, that's what we do. If you're subject to the Lord's invitation in any way, please come.